Welcome to the Dover Road History Project. The following is intended to be a short history of the road and Folkestone. Part 1. The Early Years Before the railways, there were very few people living in Dover Road or East Folkestone generally. Folkestone itself was underdeveloped. Its population was only 4,300. Most people lived either around the Bale area near the parish church, or in narrow streets near the harbour. However, when the railway arrived in 1843, the town's growth really took off. The railway arrived relatively early compared to other areas and really helped kickstart the town. The Ra South Eastern Railway Company brought the harbour and opened a branch line to the harbour in 1849 which allowed the railway to link to the ferry and regular packet ship service to Boulogne was established. One by-product of this involved the establishing of a railway station just off Dover Road called Folkestone Junction, which was the first major Folkestone station and was actually built before the spur line was in place. Passengers initially had to disembark there and were taken down to the harbour by carriage. However, within a couple of years, a line was built to the harbour with a station close to the packing ships. Even so, Folkestone Junction Station remained the main passenger station of the Folkestone until 1895, when the central station was built. The effect of this was to develop the town to the east, and in particular, led to a speculative building boom around Dover Road and nearby streets. An 1845 map shows a layer of the main roads, which were little more than farm tracks, and was very different from today. Where Harbour Way is now was the bustling Dover Street, which started near the harbour and merged into Dover Road near the Raglan and Martello pubs. The part of Dover Road which dog legs to the right, going towards the town, was in 1845 called Mill Lane. An example of this building boom could be seen in the Folkestone Chronicad, dated 31st of December 1864. A piece of valuable freehold building land containing two acres to be sold by Mr George Brickman at King's Arms Folkestone, 3rd of Jan 1865 at 6 for 7 o'clock. Or valuable freehold building, two acres on the north side of Mill Lane in the town of Folkestone the principal thoroughfare from the town to the railway station. The earliest buildings in Dover Road were the Martello Inn, originally called the Fleur de Lis, which was built sometime in the 1760s. As a coaching inn, we could catch a horse-drawn carriage to places like Canterbury, Dover, Deal, even London. As soon as the railway arrived, the coach is stopped. Note, a coach is a kind of carriage which is enclosed and carrying usually more than four people driven by a coachman sitting at the front. The Raglan was built in the 1860s. There was no notice in 1871 public house to let the Lord Raglan near South Eastern Railway Station Folkestone apply to Alfred Kingsford, Brewery, Buckland Brewery, Dover. The railway tavern at 119 Dover Road was built in the 1860s, as was the Swan at 176 Dover Road, while the railway bell, 209 Dover Road, the other side of the skew arches, might date from earlier. Rumour has it that there was a pub on the site as early as 1843, 
built the same time as the railway line was being constructed and supplied beer to the workers. However, no evidence of this has ever been found to confirm the rumour. What is known is that the brewers Nader and Collier from Croydon obtained a lease of land from George Hollinge at a rent of £74 per annum for 99 years, uh, quite a large sum at the time, on the 29th of September 1862. Another building you couldn't miss if you were in the 1840s Dover Road was a fine stone building called the Victoria Hotel. This was built in 1845 by Thomas Freeman, who was hoping to attract passengers from the nearby station. This business failed and the building went on to become a holiday home for children from London, then a temperance hotel, finally becoming a depository for furniture. A real infrastructure was built, which included churches and schools. Most of the churches, for some reason, were built at the lower end of Dover Road, that part originally called Mill Lane. What dominated the Dover Road skyline there was the St Michael's Church, built on a grand scale on a design based on medieval friars' churches of Belgium and Germany. Another building which should not be forgotten was St Mary's National School, most of which still stands next door to Strickland's post office. This was founded in 1855 with a grant from the Earl of Folkestone and catered for 575 children and was founded by the Reverend Martin Woodward, vicar of the parish church. Other constructions were around the railway itself, including the railway cottages in front of the station, the station itself, the station master's house, this is all where St Lawrence Court is now, and also the merchant and builder's yards, carriage sheds and coking ovens. After 1895, due to the demand of wealthy people living in Folkestone and its expanding West End, the central station became the main passenger station. Even so, Junction Station remained important for both passengers and increasingly for goods like coal and materials often stored in mounds outside the station itself. Brian Hart, in his book Folkestone Railways, claimed the development around the railway station made sure this area was only ever to be a working class area. In particular, he cited the decision of South Eastern Railway to establish a coking plant at the upper station. The foul stench of the coking chimneys had to be seen to believed, whilst nearby brickyards, timber yards and fishing interests precluded any hope of smart villas being erected downwind of these industries while Eastcliff, with their health-inducing atmosphere from the prevailing southwest wind, fulfilled the hopes and ambitions of people like Lord Radnor. <laughs>